what to eat when you're pregnant a nutrition guide for when you are expecting congratulations on your pregnancy you're embarking on a beautiful journey that will likely have some moments of stress like when you're wondering what you're supposed to be eating in order to give you and your baby the best nutrients and the best chance to grow let me put you at ease there's nothing extraordinary that you have to do you need to be eating in a way that is healthy and balanced that should be similar to the way that you are or you were already eating when you weren't pregnant so similar diet just about 300 calories more but we are going to get into specific do's and don'ts of nutrition during pregnancy and then we are also going to talk about specific nutrients that you need to be a little bit more mindful of so let's get into the do's of pregnancy and the first thing that you need to do is you need to focus on getting in a bunch of nutrient dense whole foods this is similar than if you're not pregnant you just need to make sure that the bulk of your diet is composed of whole foods things like fruit and vegetables legumes and beans, whole grains, and lean sources of protein, nuts and seeds, things like that, and that you reduce the processed foods. It doesn't mean that you can't eat them ever. Of course not. It's just now's really the time to emphasize these types of foods because they are going to give you all the nutrients that you need for your growing baby. You need fruit and vegetables to have plenty of vitamins and minerals that you need to hit for your pregnancy and you also need to be eating whole grains because they're going to help alleviate certain constipation that you may have and experience during pregnancy and they're also going to prevent like blood sugar spikes it's important that you get in lean protein as well because your body cannot store it and so you want to make sure that you have enough every day for you and your growing baby and healthy fats are also important for the healthy development of your baby's brain again this doesn't mean that you have to eat only these foods but they should be making up the bulk of your meals staying hydrated is also very important it always is even if you're not pregnant but specifically if you are drinking enough water at least eight glasses a day it can help prevent and reduce constipation and can make sure that you have all the fluids necessary to help you create things like amniotic fluid for your growing baby I would suggest that you have a little water bottle that you just carry around all the time so that you make sure that you're getting in water enough and another thing is that as you get more and more pregnant as a month the months pass that you are likely to feel pressure on your bladder and then to go want to go to the bathroom more and then to reduce the amount of water you drink so to compensate that but as much as possible please don't do that it's very very important that you stay hydrated you also need to practice good food safety now, i don't want to scare you with this at all that's not the goal but when you're pregnant there's going to be changes in your immune system and you're just more likely to get a disease that is like foodborne and if harmful bacteria from the illness crosses the placenta and it gets into the baby's system and the baby doesn't have a good enough immune system to fight it then it can be a problem so now more than ever make sure that you wash your hands before you eat and that you uh, take great care in cooking foods enough specifically meat and like animal products make sure that your food is stored at the proper temperature and now is also not the time to eat foods past their expiration date you also need to avoid certain foods like undercooked meat and like raw eggs or like undercooked eggs and raw fish as well and even fish in general if it has like high mercury and pasteurized dairy products as well can potentially be harmful so again this is just to stay on the safe side doesn't mean you need to be paranoid about everything but it's just important to know listen to your body so every pregnancy is different and you're probably reading a bunch of books or watching videos or listening to other women and how they dealt with their pregnancy and you'll find out that things that work for some don't necessarily work for others and you should not be trying to eat in the perfect way or to like do all these perfect things you really need to focus on you and what works for you i'm just here to give you like a baseline and you can kind of cherry pick which items work for you which don't work and make sure that you are listening to the cues that your body is sending you practicing mindful eating is also very important all the time but 
specifically during your pregnancy because it's very important to be able to tune into what your body's telling you, what it's telling you that you need to eat, and also the times at which you need to be eating and how hungry or full you are, like up until when should you keep on eating. All of these things are especially important when you're pregnant because again, your body may give you certain signals if you're able to tune into them. So make sure that you work on that. And to help you, I have an entire playlist on mindful and intuitive eating. You can check it out here or in the description. Now let's talk about the don'ts of pregnancy. And the first one is going to be a shocker. No, just kidding, it's very obvious. Don't drink alcohol. Alcohol during pregnancy is not recommended at all. It can cause fetal alcohol spectrum disorder and it can just lead to a variety of issues with child development and also like behavioral issues, mental health issues, all of that. And it's important to know that there is no amount that has been deemed safe to consume when you're pregnant. Now, am I saying that you can't even have a drop of alcohol for nine months? Not necessarily, but I'm just like giving you the facts. There, we haven't found a dose where you're like, okay, under this, you're fine, above this, there's a risk we just haven't so it's better to lay off the alcohol for nine months make sure that you aren't skipping meals now you should never be skipping meals even if you're not pregnant but specifically when you are you really need to make sure that you're having your three or like however many meals you generally have every day and that you're making them balanced meals if you start skipping meals then you are not going to be getting the nutrients that you need it's going to lead to binging on something else later on the only reason why you should be skipping meals is if you're like really not hungry or sick or anything like that you know in that case you don't need to force yourself but it's really important that you find a way to fit into your schedules your three meals your snacks, whatever, and to make sure that that is always taken care of because you're really gonna need the continuous energy that meals will provide and it's very important for you and for your baby as well. Another don't in, in pregnancy is, and sorry, I'm probably gonna disappoint people, but don't get too much caffeine. So don't be scared, I'm not saying that you should cut caffeine completely. I would just advise that you don't go over like four cups of coffee. Some people say like one to two, I think, you can, you can go up to four. It's just that if you go a little higher, it can be associated to lower birth weights and certain issues. But no, like definite link has been shown. But again, it's just a good idea to stay on the safe side and make sure that you are not overdoing it on the coffee. But again, this doesn't mean that you have to stop drinking coffee, especially if it's something that helps you throughout this difficult period. By all means, drink your coffee. And please, please, please don't be too hard on yourself. It's already hard enough to eat healthy and balanced when you're not pregnant and you don't need to be putting too much pressure on yourself to eat perfectly. And I hope that these tips and way, ways of eating kind of encompass that. I don't want you to be hyper stressed on making sure that you get all these different nutrients and make sure that you're not missing out on anything. No, it's mainly about eating a balance of foods that make you feel good and also nourish you and that you feel are nourishing your baby and also that you take pleasure in because if mom is happy and then baby is happy and that's all that matters. You're obviously gonna have days where you don't wanna cook or where you wanna eat junk food or where you don't hit like all the nutrients that you need and that's totally fine please don't overstress this again it's about the actions that you do on a whole that you generally do and it's not about like micromanaging every single detail every single food that you are gonna eat so now let's talk about specific nutrients that you have to watch out for when you're pregnant so of course if you're eating a variety of foods like i talked about previously then chances are you're going to be hitting all of your requirements but when you're pregnant there are a few things that you need to be specifically cautious of and make sure that you are getting enough. So we're just gonna go through that now. So first of all, iron is key in fetal development and it helps with the formation of red blood cells, which then transport oxygen throughout your system and your baby. So very important that you get enough iron and you can find it in red meats and seafood and spinach and lentils and in a bunch of fortified foods like cereals or certain like other grains. Make sure to just check the label 
for that. Iodine is very important for your baby's neurocognitive development and for thyroid hormones, so make sure that you are getting enough. You can find it in iodized table salt. Please make sure that your salt is iodized. That is healthy, that is good, and if not, you risk being deficient in iodine and you can also get it from dairy products or from eggs or seafood and supplementation can be discussed with a doctor if you feel that you are not getting enough you can get supplemented by around 150 micrograms a day but again please check with a professional folic acid or folates help with the correct development and formation of your baby's neural tube you can find folates in dark leafy greens beans and legumes and some foods have been fortified with it like refined grains and you can also find it naturally in whole grains and since many people don't meet the requirements for folates a lot of health professionals will recommend that you get a supplement in form of folic acid of 400 to 800 micrograms a day. Choline. So most people don't get enough choline as it is, but you need to be careful about it when you're pregnant. You can find it in meats, eggs, certain seafood, and beans and lentils, and cruciferous veggies. And if you feel that you need supplementation, you can get supplementation to reach 450 milligrams a day. Again, something to discuss with a professional before you do so. Calcium is essential for strong bones and strong teeth and muscle contraction. And it's very important to get enough because if you don't, your baby will leach it from your own bones. You can find it in dairy products or fortified plant-based alternatives, fortified cereal or certain grains, again, something to look for in dark leafy greens, in beans and lentils, and in nuts and seeds. Vitamin D declines during pregnancy because of the demand of the fetus and you need to make sure that you are getting enough to compensate for that and this can help with prevent things such as like preeclampsia and gestational diabetes and also having like a preterm birth so make sure that you are getting enough sunlight and you can also find vitamin d in foods like salmon or milk and like fortified soy milk and tofu there's fortified like cereals and orange juices things like that and it can also be a good idea to supplement in vitamin d with about 600 units a day specifically if you have darker skin super important that you get vitamin D supplements so another question that a lot of expecting mothers have is what about prenatal vitamins I think that for most women it's kind of like a given that they're gonna take some kind of prenatal vitamin when they're pregnant like they have to but let me tell you that if you are eating a well planned out and balanced diet like I talked about, then you don't necessarily have to take a prenatal vitamin. I think personally that it's more important to focus on supplementing the different nutrients that I talked about that you absolutely have to watch out for and to supplement the ones that you need and to check that with a doctor, like check your blood level so you know what you need to be supplementing in. Because the issue with prenatal vitamins is that they're not necessarily going to have the necessary requirements that you specifically need and it can be easy to overdose on certain nutrients if you are like taking certain supplements and also prenatal vitamins so I think you really need to be careful when you're getting prenatal vitamins and also like supplementing certain things make sure that you check make sure that nothing like overlaps or that you're not getting too much of certain things and that you're doing your research to make sure that you're supplementing in what is useful to you and not in what is not useful and all prenatal vitamins are different some may look more like a multivitamin and so then you can take that and then supplement on specific things that pregnant women are likely to be deficient in like i talked about earlier or you can find one that covers all of the things that you need specifically if you can do that i think that that is awesome because it will alleviate some of the mental load that you have during pregnancy and so that's always good but again my point here is that you shouldn't be just taking any prenatal vitamin you should be doing your research just make sure that you're not over supplementing with both supplements and prenatal vitamins and just getting a bunch of stuff that you don't need so now we're going to talk about an issue that i get a lot of questions about and that is what about pregnancy cravings? So while the actual cause of pregnancy cravings it's, is still unknown, it may be linked 
to certain psychological factors or certain like hormone changes or even like nutrient deficiencies that happen because of different demands so all of these things even if there's not one specific thing is very recognize that most women will experience a type of craving when they're pregnant and it can be really weird stuff for some experts it's about your body trying to tell you that you're lacking something and that you need to eat that for the baby which you know hasn't been proved or disproved i think that if you are very in tune with your body it's highly possible that it can then give you certain signals in pregnancy to tell you like okay i want to be eating this or that but sometimes some cravings just don't make sense like if you're craving like pickles and chocolate there's probably no nutritional reason behind it but i would say that you can go ahead and indulge in these cravings just like you would any other craving when you are not pregnant you need to find this balance between enjoying what you're craving and also of course making sure that you are not overdoing it like if you're craving cookies you don't want to be eating the entire box of cookies but maybe a cookie or two will satisfy your craving and then you can move on and be fine but if you're like oh no i'm craving this cookie i can't have it i can't have it then guess what you're probably going to end up restricting restricting and then eating the entire box if your diet is healthy and balanced and includes the foods that we talked about and like the nutrients that are important to watch out for then cravings are likely just cravings so again it's totally fine to indulge a little bit but you don't want it to be the entire basis of your diet of course so hopefully this was helpful to you and if you have any more questions that i didn't answer don't hesitate to leave them in the comments and that's it for this video i hope that you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to like it and subscribe and see you on my next one bye